Hi guys, Grant Shapps, who is the current business secretary, has used other names in the past to identify himself, such as Michael Green and Sebastian Fox, as part of a, how can I put this, business venture. Well, it seems with the help of the BBC, he can add another name to that list, Martin Lewis, the money-saving expert. Shapps was interviewed at what I believe was his home, where he gave some energy and money-saving tips to those struggling with the cost of living crisis. Have a listen to this. Where do we start? Well, actually, here's a brilliant place to start. Drafty front door, uh, draft excluder like that. It's pretty straightforward. Um, down there. Now, if you do that on wherever you've got drafts coming through, that could save you perhaps 60 quid a, a bit year. of film on the windows sometimes is right. Yes, many. if you haven't got the double or triple glazing windows, a single glazed window, a bit of film on that, a bit of draft exclusion, perhaps 60 pounds a year. 60 quid. Can yeah. I just... Yeah, come and have a... Work home have a have just, have... just pointing that out. Sorry, Grant, we'll find you in here. <laughs> <laughs> you want to do the work as well. That would be even better. Thank you. So I'll leave that to you. Next thing, there's something I didn't know about. If you have a boiler uh, with uh, the bo boiler flow controls, which they all do, they're often set to max. Mine was. Turning those down, they you say to 60, 65 degrees, that is going to make no difference at all to the temperature in your house, the radiators or your water. What it will do is make the boiler more efficient, save you probably £100 a year. Because they're actually designed to operate at slightly lower temperatures than they're often set to. That, that's right. Often they get installed, they get set for, to full, no one ever gets into that and checks it. Um, and actually, not only is it more efficient, actually the boiler can last longer as well, can be less, less harmful to the boiler. So it, it's a win in every direction there. And you've got some other tips as well, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, very, very simple. Um, All the way through the kitchen. Again, in here, um, it's something which we were definitely guilty of. Lots of devices left on standby. Microwave here, you know, screen on, no particular reason for it. Simple solution, of course, is turn it off of the wall. Do that. On devices, the average house, probably about 70 quid a year. Another 70 Another quid. 70 so this 70 is adding up, isn't mm. it? Okay. Now, first of all, let me say this advice is good advice. I'm not criticizing the advice here and criticizing the messenger. Um, the advice he gave, you know, blocking drafts, uh, switching off devices that aren't in use, turning down the boiler. Great, great advice from Grant Chaps. The problem is <laughs> this Tory government has put people into a situation where they're struggling. Like these sort of feel good videos. If this was delivered by anyone else, I wouldn't be making a response to this, okay? Because the advice is good. The problem is you have a Tory minister who's on probably 12,000 pounds a month telling people how to save money when he has voted against policies that helps people during a cost of living crisis. He's voted against policies that help people who are struggling at the moment. He voted against a policy to provide free school meals, to help people during uh, who are unable to work due to illness or disability. He's voted against these policies. So when he comes out and he says, here's a way to save money, it's a little bit jarring. It's a little bit in your face. It's a bit, you know, it's, uh, it doesn't settle well with people. You have ministers doing these sort of videos, which is, and, and I'm criticizing also the BBC here, you know, why choose the business secretary to, t to explain to people how to save money? Why not actually use somebody who actually cares? Like Martin Lewis, visit Martin Lewis, Lewis's house and ask him, how can we save money? What, what can we do? This would be much, much better in my opinion. Now, maybe I'm going out on a bit of a limb here. Maybe I'm being excessive. But it's a bit like having an arsonist turn around to your house and explain how to, you know, how, where you should install fire extinguishers or smoke alarms. That's what it sounds like. The message is fine. The problem is the person who's delivering it. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think about all of this. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.